to run away. Will you ever learn? Last summer, we had all of Heath's tools out on the front porch. This summer, we've had old washing machines, new washing machines on the front porch. And we have a lot of company coming this summer in the next couple of weeks. And so I kind of want the porch how I've always dreamed it would be. I've been eyeing these two little cute rocking chairs at the big box store. I finally bought myself an early birthday present today. Her leverage, <laughs> her leverage to get stuff done is for my birthday. And we have company coming. So. You didn't say that. You said for my birthday. Her birthday's not for like two months, so. But well, it's okay. She deserves it. Our front porch, like she said, for the longest time, our front porch was a cluster. So. And I've today, been on the lookout for some old antique rocking chairs, but first of all, they're hard. They're to hard find. to find. Oftentimes, they're, they don't hold up. Yeah, they're kind of rickety. So I saw these ones today, and. So I'm taking a break from the roof. To, the kids are going to help us get the front porch the way she wants it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, want, I, I love our front porch. One of my favorite things to do in the evenings when I'm done working before the sun goes down is just kind of sit out here and I can see the, you know, the beautiful sunsets that we have out here. And it's just a, it's just a spot uh, to decompress. So let's get So it. bummer part is the rocking chairs didn't come put together. So Heath and I are gonna attempt putting it together, but it's not as bad as an Ikea thing. Might come in a little piece. I've never been to Ikea. Me either. I don't know that but I'll ever go to Ikea. That's just the rumors I've heard. So okay. hopefully it's not as bad as something like that. <laughs> Let's get after it. All right. Everything we don't want on the, the porch. Yeah. Yeah, take it for the now, take it out inside the shop. If you were paying close attention there, you could see that the bands that we put on the baby goats a couple of weeks back are doing their job. Three of the goats are days away from losing their horns. One of them we may have to reband. One way or the other, the goats will be without horns very soon. If you were also paying attention, you noticed that Cedar got her new washing machine without any dents. Picking up the washing machine wasn't without challenge, but we got it up here and got it installed and she couldn't be happier. Although every time I walk by it and I hear it, it sounds like the printer on our computer is printing something. It's incredibly quiet. Cedar has a brand new washer and dryer for the first time in our married life. Oh, ooh, sharp it's flipped. We'll see if it's rated for a... Oh my gosh! Did it just break? I'm hoping that... Uh... It's just breaking it in? <laughs> it's just making it settle? <laughs> Doing what we did to the front porch was most definitely Cedar's idea. Every once in a while she has to remind me to slow down with some of the bigger projects and help out where I can make the house look like a home. Alright, let's do the lights. As much as I may have enjoyed having all of my tools sitting on the front porch, it was a little bit too redneck. I knew it, she knew it. I built a shop, now she has her front porch. 
When I was building the house, I would regularly think about the idea of sitting on the front porch in the evenings, enjoying this thing that we worked so hard for. I find myself doing this most evenings. Once the sun drops behind the mountains, the weather cools off very, very fast, and before I know it, I'm working my way back inside just to stay warm. It's one of my favorite things about where we live. While we have over 40 acres, the one thing we don't have a lot of is flat land. This is the most important project of the day. Oh, this thing, it looks so big. The kids have been asking to pick up a lightweight, inexpensive <laughs> swimming pool for the last month. So I figured after we helped Cedar get the porch situated, I could spend a few minutes using my Milwaukee blower, blowing up a swimming pool. That would give the kids an opportunity to cool off and have a little bit of fun.
Callie was certain she was getting frostbite on her toes, so she connected the hose to the hot water bib and solved the cold water problem. You don't have frostbite anymore. It's 95 degrees outside. You're trying to tell me you have frostbite? It's from the water. Okay, I am on my way down to pick up our new standby generator. Uh, we currently have an eight kilowatt Kohler generator and we are putting in a 20 kilowatt Cummins generator. Uh, I'm, I'm a Cummins guy. I've always been a Cummins guy. I'm really looking forward to getting the new generator at least up here and then I can make some uh, plans on how I'm going to install this. I've been talking with Nick from Generation Systems and he's already given me some advice as far as how and where I'm going to install this. So initially uh, I wanted to install this in a room. He was concerned about that as far as getting the proper amounts of fresh air in there. And so anyway, I'm going to talk to him while I'm down there, get back up here and then uh, get the generator put in the shop temporarily get the roof finished, and then I can start making plans on where I'm gonna install it. Okay, this is our brand spanking new 20 kilowatt Cummins standby backup generator, whatever you want to call it. For the last couple of years, we've been using a Kohler 8 kilowatt standby generator. And other than one minor little speed bump, it's done an okay job. The only issue that we've had with it is since we've, we've wired up the shop, it's no longer uh, quite enough for everything that we have. And basically all that I use that standby generator for is to charge the battery bank during the, the short days of the winter months when um, it, basically December and January. So for the last two years that we've, that we've had that Kohler generator, it's only, I think I've only got about 250 hours, maybe even 300 hours on the, on the entire uh, unit. So it doesn't run that often, but uh, if you remember, I think it was November of last year, um, the carburetor rattled loose on that um, generator and for two days, I, I thought it was something more uh, serious than that. And for a couple of days, I tried to get a hold of a good company and, and try and get a service tech that would even come up here. And the end result is I couldn't get, I couldn't find anybody. Just recently, a good friend of mine here in town hooked me up with a guy named Nick uh, with Generation Systems out of Tooele, Utah. And I got on the phone with Nick and the, the main reason he connected me with Nick was because Nick had the 20 kilowatt generator. Right now it's at least a six month waiting list to get your hands on a, a standby generator with all manufacturers. Um, I got on the phone with Nick and I quickly discovered that not only does he know what he's doing, but he was a Cummins guy like me. He was experienced, but he services all, all makes of uh, generators, but he just had experience. The other thing that was a, a motivating factor for me to, to go through uh, Nick was the fact that he's willing to come up here and service my, my unit. He works from, you know, basically southeastern Idaho, northern Utah, all the way down to southern Utah. Um, I went down and picked it up. I wanted to have it here on site. I'm probably not gonna install it for, you know, at least until the roof is done. Initially, the plan was to install it uh, 
on, in a room. I was going to build a room specific for the generator. After talking with Nick, he talked me out of it. He said it's not good for these units to be in a room. They need, uh, unless I can provide the proper airflow for it. Uh, this unit needs to have uh, the right amount of fresh air coming in, and so I'm probably going to put it on the back corner of the shop. Um, the more established we get up here, the longer we live this lifestyle, the more we are fixing some of these things that we did in the early days. I bought that eight kilowatt Kohler generator uh, through one of the big box stores because the price, because they were willing to price match. Uh, come to find out, I should have, um, I, I probably should have initially, there's no question, I should have initially gotten a bigger unit. Uh, and, and there's really nothing wrong with that unit at this point. Um, other than it's just not what we need. It would be perfect for somebody that was grid tied, that uh, just wanted to keep the power on uh, when, their, when their main source of power goes down. But in our situation, when we get in those hard winter months, I don't want to worry about this stuff anymore. So I'm really looking forward to uh, getting the old generator uh, unhooked and moved away from the house and this new one installed. And Nick is going to help me through this process and he's even gonna come up here at some point in time. So anyway, I'm look, I, this, this is a, a load off my mind just to have it sitting here. The way we live our life is an absolute blessing, but it's a blessing that we worked incredibly hard to have. And I do my best to make sure my kids understand that hard work was part of the equation. Cedar regularly reminds me that although I may be good at hard work, it's important to slow down once in a while and spend some time with the kids. They're all growing up way too fast. In my mind, I'm thinking, I better get on the roof. It may rain. Before I know it, snow's gonna be here and the roof's not gonna be done. Then I think about all the other projects that I have to do. But in my heart, I think about what memories my kids will have of this life experience. And I hope that those memories include me and having a little bit of fun. As far as the new roof is concerned, it takes almost more time to remove the wood in a way where it can be reused than to just simply tear it off and go buy new wood. But as I've said before, because wood is as expensive as it is, I'm doing everything I can to reuse it. I didn't make anywhere near as much progress on the roof this week, but that's okay. There's always next week. I took care of the important things like the Tico nails and the Simpson rafter hangers, ensuring that when that snow slides off the second story to that first story, that those roof rafters stay exactly where they're supposed to be. Experience is always the best teacher, and as expensive as redoing this roof is, sometimes learning the hard way is the only way that it gets through my thick head.
I've had a number of people reach out to me through email and Instagram messages recommending I do the roof in a number of different ways. And the bottom line is I put a lot of thought into this. I've watched what the snow does over winter. And what I'm doing here and now is the best solution without removing windows and with keeping the project as simple as I can keep it. I mentioned it in a previous video, but technically I could have done this in two by eights. I could have even built a truss out of two by sixes that I could have set on the existing roof and it would have been a much smaller project. But in my mind's eye, it would not have looked right. This is the reason I'm going to the lengths that I'm going to, to fix the roof. There are a few things about the house that I see on a regular basis that kind of bother me. So making sure that I fix it in a way where it's going to be functional, but that I'm also satisfied with is super important. Like most phases of construction, there's typically more than one way to do the job. What's most important to me is not only that the job is done to code, but that I'm happy with the end result. And I can see that using 2x12s, cutting the rafter tails to match the second story, it's going to be perfect. And it will also function perfectly. The original angle on the roof uh, was five degrees. And even with five degrees, the snow would not slip off, but it would slowly slide off. We would get a heavy snow, and if I left it, it would slowly, second story would slide down to the first story, and it would slowly, over a few weeks, slide away from the house. The problem would be that if I would get, if we would get a, another snowstorm in that time, it would literally get to be three feet, four feet, five feet tall right here next to the house. And I was always uh, concerned about water going back up against the house. That's why we would get up and shovel it off. The new angle on the rafters is 16 degrees. 16 degrees is about three and a half, 12 pitch. Uh, the shop is a 412 pitch. The house is a 412, or the house is a 612 pitch. Um, 312 will slide. 312 will slide. Again, it may not slide um, all at once, and especially with the brand new tin, it seems like it takes a couple of years for the oil to go away that's on the tin. But everybody has an opinion about this, um, but the bottom line is we've lived it, and so we know what works. I have a conflict with the windows. Um, if I wanted to, you know, at this point, I don't know what I would do. I would have to get new windows, I suppose, and I could raise it up another foot, but we don't need that. Uh, three and a half, 12 pitch is perfect. Okay, especially once we remove the corrugated tin and we have the R panel tin on this that has way less, um, it will have way less screws in it and it will ultimately have less friction and so I've got a number of emails. Uh, I don't pay attention to the comments on YouTube. I'm not. I'm not uh, horribly interested in 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 the exp experts behind the keyboard. I've, I've said that before. It doesn't mean that I don't care what you guys think. But but I, I want you to know that I put a lot of thought into this, and, and I'm certain that a three and a half twelve pitch will be perfect for our house. I won't have to mess with the windows. It's enough of a pitch that any snow that gets to the first floor will will go away from the house fast enough that I won't have to get up here and shovel it. I, I, I suppose I appreciate the concern, but like I said, 
uh, I've put quite a bit of thought into this um, and, and we've lived it, so. Let me be very clear in saying that I appreciate all of the YouTube comments. While some of you may not agree with what I'm doing, the comments are still typically positive, and I appreciate this. But the truth is, if I sat and read all of the comments of people telling me how great I am, or if I sat and read all of the comments of people telling me how much of an idiot I am, either way, they're not good for me. It really means a lot to us that you guys take the time to watch our videos. And if you have something to say, shoot me an email. And if it's worth responding to, I will most definitely email you back. So the drought in our area, this is the beginning of it. This is the beginning stages of what's more than likely to come. Uh, we're not as concerned about our water system, but we're not watering our lawn at all this year uh, because we're trying to conserve where we can. But what, what has now happened is all of the farmers in the area, two things have happened. Almost immediately, they all sold their first, uh, their first cuttings of, of alfalfa and their hay. Uh, most of the farmers got about 40 to 50% of what they normally harvest. Uh, the second thing that happened is the price of hay has gone through the roof. Um, normally, like last year, we paid $6 a bale for a two string 60 pound bale. And this year we're going to pay 10 or t I should say today we're going to pay 10. If we're lucky, we're, yeah. we're going to go, there's, we've called three people. There's one person left that says he has some grass hay and we're hoping that he sells us about uh, 50 bales. Um, we would normally push the animals up on the hill and let them graze off all, we have plenty of feed up there, uh, but I tore all of the electric fencing out because it, it frankly, it didn't keep the goats in at all. And the plan is to um, put in permanent fencing, but we haven't gotten to it yet. And so- The roof is kind of more pressing right now, getting yeah. that done. Um, while it's dry, so we can get that um, dried in, but we also didn't cover up the garden this year. We usually, last year we had the, the plastic over it and if, the goats get into our garden it'll be gone in like five minutes so. they'll go straight to the garden and they'll go straight to the apple trees and yeah. so um this is something to take into consideration most farmers even commercial farmers are are being affected uh by the drought uh something like um they're even having water rations too 50, they're back 50 percent on their water rations mm -hmm. which means the vegetables that are going to be sold in the in the supermarkets um are either going to the price is probably going to go up and then on top of that just simply uh, availability is, is a big concern and and again my my fear is we are barely scratching the surface here what's going to happen uh, a month two months three months from now before we really get back into i, mean, I, I don't know i don't we've never had it this dry uh, uh this year this year is going to tell us a lot uh this year is going to tell us if our shallow well is deep enough um it, it, you know every year it's a it's a an opportunity to learn and all that we can do now is go and try and, and get enough hay put up 
uh, to last just the winter. Yeah. So this is not going to last through year. the winter. But what I'm hoping happens mm. is a few more cuttings come up, and I'm we're we're all just hoping it rains. Mm. You know, everybody's praying for rain. So anyway, the whole like Western United States. Yeah. So we're gonna go, and we and we haven't even gotten into our fire our fire season yet. So we're gonna go uh, run around town and see if we can't uh, get some hay. So we just got 50 bales of hay and it was a miracle that we were even able to get 50. This little old farmer that I buy hay from, I've been buying hay, we've been buying hay from him for like, I don't know, three or four years probably. He's His grandson's friends with, with Rhett. About um, 20 bales a time is what Yeah, usually we, we get 20 doing. because he always has so much hay. He had nothing left. I pulled up there and he was reading the uh, newspaper sitting out by the mailbox. <laughs> And uh, I didn't even ask price. I didn't, I, I was, we, we didn't care. We were prepared to pay whatever he was at. We were expecting $10 a bale. Normally we pay $5.75 a bale. He, he took us out to the field and we had to stack uh, right from the field, which again, we don't have a problem with. He's selling it so fast he can't even keep his barn full. So we well, had to go out and do it. What he said to me was, he said, I almost called him and I just had the thought, I better just show up. Um, because normally that's what we've done, and he's because he's had so much. He's out always there. has hay. Yeah. Um, we pull up out here. Um, he basically says fifty is all that he has left on this cut. Everything else is sold. He told me that his phone has been ringing off the hook. By ten o'clock this morning, he said he came inside and his he had so many messages. He every day mm -hmm. it's that way. So anyway, I just asked him. He he's a little old guy. He doesn't move around so good. So he he rides his four wheeler everywhere. <laughs> And I just asked him what I owed him. And he said, you owe me 325 bucks, which comes down to 650 a bale. So if I were to drive into town, uh, 30 minutes south, it's $15 for the same bale. So he had one of his farmhands out there helping us stack hay. And I looked at the farmhand, I said, he should be charging $10 a bale. And, and the farmhand said, well, he, can get, he could get $15 a bale if he had to, but he wouldn't do it. That's just not who he was. And so I'm not even mad at the guys that are getting that much. I'm really not. You know, when they have something that everybody else wants, there's part of me that's... Not even wants. This is a need. Like Being a farmer is just a shade better than, than being a professional gambler, in my opinion. And when these guys... By the way, he also said the irrigation department called him and they think their water's going to be shut down by this weekend. And so... We have 50 bales. I think our goats are going to go on a ration. I think I may have to finish a portion of the roof and get up to fencing and get that those two sections fenced so we can save the hay. Um, these strange times, strange times. And, and on the one hand, I'm incredibly grateful for, for farmers in general. For sure. Um, you know, Cedar had, had the thought that uh, when you eat your lunch or dinner today you better find a, a farmer to thank <laughs> so anyway we're going to get back to the house and get the hay stacked and wrap a tarp around it and hope for the best It's always nice to do business with somebody that doesn't feel the need to take advantage of the situation. But like I said, I would have happily paid that farmer $15 a bale if that's what he wanted.
because ultimately he's probably still going to break even if he's only getting 50 to 60 percent of the crop that he would normally get while the farm life can seem romantic from a long ways away when you get up close and personal with it it is rarely a lucrative business but I'm so grateful for all the people that devote their lives to farming. Once we build the new barn right here on the end of the shop, one of the things that I plan on building is a designated space where we can have about a hundred bales of hay covered. We still have a whole lot of feet up on the hill, but I've got to find the time to get it fenced so the goats will stay where they're supposed to stay. Come on. Get. Let's go. It seems like most farmers get about three to five cuttings in a good year right here in southeastern Idaho. I can remember buying hay back in the good old days in Arizona, and oftentimes it was the seventh or the eighth or the ninth cut. And while the hay may not have been the best at that point, the season was long enough that the farmers were able to grow it. But back in Arizona, where all of those farm fields used to be, there's now a nice subdivision. I'm sure the price of hay has got to be out of control back home as well. I've been paying close attention to all of the new battery powered uh, products that are coming out that historically have been gas powered. Um, it's just interesting because this is our life and naturally I would love the idea of being a little bit less dependent on uh, petroleum up here. There's nothing better than plugging in your Milwaukee batteries uh, that are being charged by the sun. So I picked up the Milwaukee uh, weed trimmer. Um, I try to stay in the Milwaukee lane, I guess, because I already have their batteries. Um, and there's really two questions that I have about, uh, about this stuff. Uh, because of the size of our property, the first question I have is how long is the battery going to last? And the second question I have is how heavy is it? Again, because of the size of our property, um, by the time I'm done weed eating, my, I, have, I have numbness issues in my hands for a day or two afterwards. And the gas powered units are heavy. They're just heavy. It's, it's kind of how it is. Um, so for the first time, I'm going to mow our front yard, which I haven't mowed in a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm trying to let the bluegrass go to seed a little bit. Um, and I want to see if I'm going to be able to get it done on one battery pack. My love 
You're such a fragile thing, I know. And with the winter comes the ice, the snow. But I'm here at all. And oh my love. The trees haven't started to shed. Just feel the summer sun as it warms our bed. I'm lying and I'm lying. I picked up this old DR Converta zero turn mower two summers ago for about 400 bucks. This thing will not stop. And while it's not as powerful as I wish it could be, part of the reason I love this thing so much is because it can convert back and forth from a zero turn mower to a walk behind mower, as you will see here shortly. There are places up on our hillsides where it's not safe to be sitting on this thing, getting as close as I do to the edges. So I will convert it to a walk behind long enough to get around the edges and get as close as I safely can. Then when it's safe, I jump back on it and enjoy the ride. I think I'm going to replace the rear tires with a wider rim and an ATV tire. That's my only complaint. The tires don't quite have enough traction on the hillsides. We would like to wish you a happy 4th of July from our family to yours. Please be safe.